Uh, all right. Well, testing is is uh, what a chief engineer loves. Uh, any any chief engineer should just be involved in the testing. In fact, I spend most of my time over the last six months down at the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building, uh, down at Kennedy Space Center. And so, for the last really uh, six months, we've been doing uh, a little bit more than six months. We've been doing what we call ITCO. That's integrated test and checkout. And that's where all of these different systems have come together for the first time. And, and a lot of this, um, and it's going smoothly, it's going exactly like we planned. We did a lot of testing that we, um, that we expected to do that really saved us development time and money. Uh, like for instance, I'm gonna give you one of my favorite tests, and that's called the modal test. And, uh, mm. and every time I spell modal in a document, somebody corrects me and says model. But it's not model test, it's modal, it's dynamic response. So we literally shake the vehicle. We had, and, and in fact, we shake the vehicle and we shake the mobile launcher and we do it at different positions, at different frequencies. And so we, we have these known input shakers that we put on this vehicle and we measure, and measure the response of the vehicle at different places with strain gauges and accelerometers. And, and so we get this dynamics of the vehicle. And what that tells us is how well we can control the vehicle. And let me just go ahead and report to you that controllability is good. It also tells us what our loads are gonna be and how we radiate those loads. And let me just tell you on that one, the finite element models we used to predict the loads were verified through that testing, so we expect that to uh, all be good. In fact, that's all cleared for launch. Uh, that's a test that historically has been done with a full flight hardware set that was essentially wasted for that test. And so we, we decided to do something a little bit different, you know, we've got shakers that you would use on a bridge, right? You, you, you know, for anybody that's old in the audience, they saw the Tacoma Narrows Bridge videos, at least, uh, where there was an aeroelastic event, there was a response to a wind gust on a bridge, and it just shook itself and, and tore apart. And, and, and the phenomenon is a little bit different, but very similar that can occur on a rocket when it's flying through the atmosphere, or even while it's sitting on the ground, you know, wind gust goes over. And so we test that air elastic type response by putting that known forcing function in. In fact, the shakers that we use are generally used to shake bridges when they build them in order to verify their uh, capabilities. So we've done that testing. Uh, we've, we've done testing to make sure all the systems work together to understand the latency and the electronic components. You know, if we send a signal, uh, we've got the clocks all synced up for our data acquisition units uh we've just been doing a lot of integrated sequential testing uh along the way and, and a lot of that's verification right you know you and, and and the funny thing is the things that you don't think you're testing are sometimes what tells you hey i need to look at this component again or or, or whatever like when we booted up uh, you know the viewers may know we booted up one of the engines which we had already run to full duration and we had a little bit of a hiccup in the in the start transit we've solved that now we've replaced that we understand why that occurred, uh, but it's those kind of things on a big system uh, that you need to check out before you fly, and that's what we're doing uh, even right now. The next big test, uh, staying with that integrated testing, will be called wet dress rehearsal. That's where we, uh, we we literally do a wet dress, if you will, for, um, for launch. We'll go all the way through uh, our automated launch sequence switch over, uh, we'll be press, pressurizing the tanks after we fill them up, we'll be looking at strut articulation, you know, when you put cryogenics in a big tank like this, it shrinks a little bit, so all of those things are taken into account, we've got targets on the vehicle, if you've seen the vehicle, I need to get, get you down there for this too, Gary, and you can see the VAB, you get two of your bucket list items out all at once, and that would be <laughs> seeing the wet dress and the VAB, and, uh, and and so there's targets, and we look at those difference in targets, and we measure the difference, but but before you pull me off the stage, I just want to say that testing is the backbone of any rocket. We started testing in 2011. When they made the announcement for this vehicle to get going, we were already getting ready for wind tunnel testing. I was the wind tunnel guy. I helped make those first models. I was in the wind tunnel. I, I didn't miss a wind tunnel test until 27, well, actually 2018, when they pulled me into the chief engineer's office. They pulled me in in 2017, but I, I kept going to the wind tunnel test until they, they got me doing a bunch of other uh, different things. And so, uh, uh, so we've done a lot of testing. We fired uh, rocket motors uh, in wind tunnels in order to check out base heating. And so we've just done a lot with, uh, with testing. And that's how you verify a system that's very complicated that you cannot test until you fly fully.
away, it's T minus six seconds when those engines start. So because the T minus time is mimicking the launch minus time. And so those engines did fire up. Um, there were some hydraulic pressures that we had not accounted for right, and so we stopped after 60-some uh, seconds when we started vectoring the engines. And then, uh, and then we did it again, and we did it to eight and a half minutes because we felt like that was the right thing to do. And the second test just went off without a hitch, and that's what you want. You want a quiet day. And in fact, that second long uh, duration test, uh, you know, I'd like to say it was boring, except for the fact we had 700,000 gallons of propellant about to be expended over an eight minute period coming out the back end of the rocket. Uh, and it, except for that historic event, it was really a boring day. We didn't have any things going on with the rocket. We were just monitoring the systems, going through the checklist. And that's why we test, and that's why we get ready for this launch in the same way. And, and uh, we might have a good quiet launch day as well. So, but, uh, but it was great. That, that, that green run gives us a great deal of confidence. And what is really also significant about that is it is the newest hardware. There are complicated pieces. And let me speak to complication. You don't make a rocket any com more complex than it needs to be. Uh, we don't want it to be complicated, but it's going to the moon. So it is complicated. It is complex, but it's only as complex as it has to be. There's only as many lines of code as there has to be in the flight computers. There's, there's only the complexity that's required by the mission. We try to make things simple as possible. That's how you get missions.